So you and I are gonna do something different today. We just wrapped shooting the all new Mercedes-Benz C300. But here's the problem. I can't tell you anything about it until May 16th. But Kumo, he says this is the most important car to all of Mercedes-Benz and he is not wrong. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna talk about the design of car that has the biggest impact, meaning pays all the rent at Mercedes-Benz. So let's you and I cut to the chase. In the coming full episode of this vehicle, we cover all the bolts and numbers of the propulsion system, which for the avoidance of doubt is a 48 volt mild hybrid system, as well as the options game. Today, we need to discuss the design because this is the car that literally sells the most out of all Mercedes-Benz products since the car came out, what, like in the 80s? And then the last generation, which lasted for eight years, they sold 2.5 million of these things. So you really can't make a huge change or break with tradition in the way the vehicle looks. It has to kind of look like a Mercedes. So this to me is the Russian nesting doll syndrome, basically the same design in different sizes. This started with the W223 S-Class and now it's here. And to me, I'd like to see more differentiation. I'd like to see the C-Class kind of have some familiar connections with the larger car, but not look like a baby version of it. Where you look at this thing, with the exception of the grill, it looks just like an S-Class. Like for example, look at the daylight opening. It's exactly the same shape, it's just a different proportion. And that's where Russian nesting dolls, at least to me, doesn't work. Because you can't wrap the same design on a shorter proportion because it doesn't work as well. In the front, it works incredibly well because it has this Carrera e Pan America grille, which has been borrowed from the GT. Just look at the lower valence in the front. Now, I don't know if it's because I'm Greek, but I'm kind of partial to the rear end of the vehicle. This is where the S-Class design is a bit more more successful, specifically if you're looking head on from the rear of the vehicle. You see it's more of an organic shape, dare I say it has hips, mainly because it has some extra width in the rear of the vehicle, so there's some dimensional changes to the bodywork. There are three different flavors on offer. There's a premium, which is actually the basic one. Then there's the exclusive, which is the middle of the road. And then there's this one, the Pinnacle. Now the Pinnacle can be fitted with another option, which this has a $3,000 AMG line package. That's kind of what we've seen in the past, where it changes the air dam, the rear bumper, and the side skirts. So it looks like there's more substantial car here than a 112.8 inch wheelbase. This one's also fitted with the 19 inch wheels. Now for the avoidance of doubt, 18 inch wheels are fitted as standard on all of the different flavors of new C300. Now there is one interesting design party trick. You gotta come in here and check this out. So it's got the grill that we've seen on AMG GTs for many years, but what they've done here is they've gone a little Hollywood to me, where if you look, you've got a star and a laurel. That is what the Mercedes-Benz symbol is. So one of them was Mercedes and one of them was Benz. So what they've done here is they've put the star and it's repeated as a theme throughout the entire grill. This, I personally don't like it. I think it's a bit too much. Perhaps there could be an option in the future where we change the grill. Like you actually have a real Mercedes-Benz grill that is chrome with a stand-up hood ornament. I know I'm probably coming across as an old man here, but the reality of the situation is if I want a Mercedes, it's kind of a luxury car and that's what we're gonna learn in that episode. This is still very much a luxury car. Can we at least have the option of a stand-up hood ornament? So you and I need to have a come to Jesus discussion about the design. No, not the exterior design, rather the interior design. This, uh, it should not be a surprise to you if you've seen the inside of a W223 S-Class. That is to say, there's a lot of good, yet there's one very glaring error. Let's start with the good. Uh, tactile feel unusually good here. Now granted, this one, there's different trim levels on offer in the new C-Class. This one has one of the highest trim levels, so it changes things. Like for example, the tops of the door panels as well as the top of the dash is like a simulated leather with stitching the whole thing. Makes a huge difference on the interior of what is the cheap seats of the Mercedes-Benz world. Then the overall build quality is pretty good from like here up to here. The minute you get like below your waistline, yeah, it's not great. 
And then there's some of the details of like the build quality. Like for example, this one does have the wood with the aluminum dashboard option. Absolutely makes this thing killer on the inside. Again, I would choose a different color than black to really let that shine. And then there are the screens. Literally the glaring error. Now me personally, I am not a fan of having an iPad control your vehicle. So that's like a personal preference. But put that aside. There are some things that actually do work very well here. The screen that's in front of me, it's a good size, it's customizable, I can change this into the sport like I got now. Or the traditional Mercedes-Benz two dial dashboard. That's complemented with a head-up display. Now the head-up display, no, it's not like the Costco size TV that's in the W223S class, but I'd say it's more akin to a good size computer monitor, like a 24 inch iMac. And there it's got all the information we've seen in the S class, but here's just a little bit smaller, very nice touch that this is in the cheap seats of the Mercedes Benz world. Then there's this, and I have not been unclear about my feelings of this screen. Overall, the screen idea, it's not terrible, more of a personal preference. They have made a significant change here in that they've tilted it more to the driver, so the idea is it's more sporty. But that aside, it is still unsafe. This needs to change. I am literally the poster child of what happens when people are not paying attention when they're driving because they're looking at a screen or they have to make a change on something that has no real knob or no real tactile input for you to understand what you're dealing with. Here, everything is just flat. This, it's not a complete loss. It's not like the Volkswagen ID4, that's got, it just has to be thrown away and start from scratch. This, all it needs is two multifunction knobs. It needs one here and one here for HVAC, and then as you switch between modes, it could be or double as like volume or other functionality. That's really all this system needs to be safer. And frankly, that's one of the big things that's missing here by not having like a heavy weighted knob that's bezeled in the screen and not having the same control the thing used to have. You're missing an opportunity to convey that this thing, it's a Mercedes. I mean, what's the advertising slogan they got? The best or nothing. Can we do the best or nothing on the inside? Screens would not be that. That leaves us with only one piece of business and that would be the wish list. And here, you're, you're gonna know where I'm going with this. It's pretty, it's attractive, it has its own personality of design. I'd say it's successful, but I firmly believe there's an opportunity that's kind of been left on the table of creating separate personalities in different size classes in the Mercedes passenger car world. They've kind of done that with the EQS. Whether you like it or not, it is distinctive. That's kind of what I'm looking for here. Not a copy of an EQS, rather something that looks different from an S-Class, but still has a familial connection. But I am one man, and this is the point of the episode where I turn this around to you guys to opine in the comments below, or via our social media, Moto Man TV All Word, Moto Man TV All Word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And with that, I do once again want to remind you this was a quick preview episode of the coming full first drive review of this, the 2022 Mercedes Benz C300. So please come back after May 16th to see me absolutely punish this car on a lovely Southern California road. Until I see you in that episode, bish beta.